the night. We are going to move to the next level of uh, our service. Uh, we are not going to collect our offering and tithes now. We will leave that for later. So just hold on. We are going to this moment in time. Please stand to your feet. I want to ask the church to stand to your feet as we are going to ask uh, the men and women of God to our uh, daddy, daddy and mama to step forward and take this time. Let's give a hand clap somebody. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, on me, and the power, love, the Holy Ghost, fall on me, and the Father, we come to this sacred moment in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is written in your word in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 21. It is God who establishes us and it's God who anoints us. Heavenly Father, at this particular time, we are asking you, Lord, to release your anointing to anoint your people for work. For no one can do a work in an office without the anointing. Every person you called, separated, you anointed them. You anointed kings. You anointed priests for the work of the ministry. Therefore, Father, we want to thank you for it's not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. 
Father God Almighty, even Lord, as the anointing oil is poured upon your people, let the Spirit of the Lord come upon them to enable them to do the work in the name of Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving, Lord, we pray. Amen. As we are standing in the presence of the Lord, this is a sacred moment. We are going to be ordaining some elders. And um, according to the power invested in us as overseers, we ordain elders. Amen. We are calling in front here Elder Robert from Montreal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Elder Tambuzi Peter of Syria. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. This is a special ordination. It's a special ordination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know some people were prayed for for the work, but we are ordaining them with the oil. Amen. Hallelujah. Elder Sharala come. Elder Jonathan Bester come here. Bester, where are you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Chenayam Tiziraka. These people, as they'll be doing the work there, they are there to baptize people, conduct Holy Communion in the assemblies, baptize the people. Those on probation that we are put on probation, elders, the next time we meet on a big Sunday, we'll be ordaining some more elders to do the work. Amen? There's so much work that needs to be done. And when you are ordained, amen, when you are ordained, you are empowered to conduct Holy Communion. You are empowered to baptize people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God so much for these people. Amen. We are going to ordain them today according to the word of the Lord. Paul, just in our way, uh, uh, come, come.
Then he repented in your mother's womb. Baba, the word of the Lord comes upon you in Jesus' name. My contentment in you, O my daughter. Contentment in you, my daughter. Amen. Contentment in you, my women. Amen. Not by might nor by power. What people used to see, let them see a difference of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May your strength come upon you, O God. Impart authority, impart wisdom. Impart, Lord, impart Anointing fall on me, anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing.
committee, the chairperson, the vice chair, secretary, yesterday he put in place a committee for the workers fellowship. May you come in front. May the God who began this ministry, the living God who started with his servant Ezekiel when he was but alone. May he be with you. This ordination you have received, keep it, consecrate it. You operate on a different level. Even in the spiritual realm, things have changed. Things have changed. By the fact of this ordination, things have changed. Your authority has gone up. Things which were hard will become easy for you. God bless. Um, I want you to understand. Okay, just a moment. I want to explain. Amen. Yeah, this is Big Sunday. Big Sunday. Come here, Mama. Amen. Please may the church know that these two are chairing elders, both of them. Elder Roberts and Mama Roberts, they are chairing elders. We don't want you to separate them. They are one people. Elder, just, uh, Elder Chikwanda and Mama Besta, they are chairing elders. They are one. They work together in that office. Don't separate them. Me and my wife, she's an overseer, I'm an overseer. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't say, is the overseer there? If you're talking to her, she's an overseer. Amen. Are we together? Amen. We meant to clarify that. Are, are we together? Amen. 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 So give them their due respect. Let them do the work of God together. Don't separate them. They may be different in their gifting but they are one people. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, people of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is our workers' committee, provincial workers' committee with their chairperson. Can you, can you please, first of people, please. Sidney, where is your wife? Why are you in the bench? Where the chest goes if the rib follows? Amen. Hallelujah. We want you to know that we have, we have this committee is different from the PC committee. This is a workers, provincial workers Fellowship Committee, chaired by Sidin Katandawa. Amen. All the workers in the province. Amen. All the workers in the province. This is our chairperson. Amen. When we meet for workers in the province, they chair the meeting. Amen. Hallelujah. And we have also Elder Robert, who is the vice chair. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We have our secretary, Linda. Amen. Amen. To communicate to us. Amen. Then we have the deputy, 
a young man so bold, so determined. Amen. Mugaza. Uh, Mugaza. I love his stand. Amen, amen. Even yesterday I was talking at home with my wife, says that, that young man is bold. Eh? Uh, God, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. We have our treasure to keep our money. This is Isaac Chakuma. Amen. Deacon Isaac Chakuma. Hallelujah. Uh, let's clap hands for them. We have also our committee members. Uh, committee members. We have my Sharara, our elder, sharing elder from uh, um, Ottawa. And we have also Mama Chenam Tizira from Ham Hamilton Assembly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to just bless him in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to ask them to turn around and face me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yeah, this is what we do on Big Sundays. Amen. What we are doing here, that's what Big Sunday is for, provincial Big Sunday. Hallelujah. We want this time to let you know that we have now our provincial secretary, PS. Provincial secretary. That office starting from Monday is open up to Friday. It will operate full time as a provincial office as well as a local office for administrative work. Amen. Amen. And the PS in the office of the overseers, amen, is Elder Jonathan Chikwanda. He is our PS <laughs> provincial secretary. We we'll ask him to come in front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, he's married to a wife called Besta. She's somewhere in the audience. Yeah, she's supposed to follow the the, the, the chest, the rib, the rib is found on the chest. <laughs> Hallelujah, Amen. Let me pray for them. May we stand up? They'll be doing a great work. We'll be admins. This time that we have entered, we are. You have heard we are talking about running. We are running now. We're going to run. We're going to run. Amen. So if you want to see the overseer or pastor, that office will be open. Don't come home for, for official work. Come to the office. When you come to our home, it's for fellowship. But don't come with your papers. Say, uh, pastor, I've come. I need a signature here. Uh, uh, come there. Amen. Are we together? Thank you, Lord.
Let's lift up our hands. There is a blessing for you today. There is a blessing for you today. You are going back with a blessing. Lift your hands, just lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Oh, Riba Sata Raba Baleleba, Riba Sande Rebe Leleba Saraba, Shande Rebe Leleba Sata Raba Leleba, Rebe Rebe Leleba Sita Rebe Leleba Sande Rebe Leleba, Oh, Rebe Rebe Leleba Sande Rebe Leleba Sae. Remember <laughs> Rama Rama Sandere Lift your voice and praise him. Lift your voice and praise him. Download your miracle. Download your breakthrough. Download your miracle. Download your breakthrough. Yes, lift your voice. Lift your voice and praise him. Lift your voice and praise him. Download your miracle. Come on. There is a miracle for you. There is a blessing for you. There is a blessing for you. Something is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. Yes. Yes. Oh, Rabba 
Somebody's about to get your his miracle. What you came for to the Lord, it's already for you to get it by faith. At this time, There is a miracle, a breakthrough, a blessing with your name attached. The big Sunday comes after three or four like this one has come after five months. And what you're going to receive here could carry you for another another three, four months before we meet again. It's not an opportunity you should just play around with. The gravity of this gathering should not be underestimated and the significant significance that it covers. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for what you're going to do in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Sit down, get your pen. I want to speak some words of wisdom. Write these things. Number one, you'll never be blessed in a place where you don't like. You'll never be blessed in a place which you don't like. You will never be blessed in a place where you don't like. Did you get that? What did I say? What you had will never come to you. What you had will never come to you. What you love will come to you. If you hate prosperity, it will never come to you. But if you love it, it will come to you. If you love it, it will come to you. What you love, you attract. What you love, you attract. What you desire is what God gives you. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Amen. 
what you despise will never raise you. Any anointing you don't value will never work for you. Any anointing you don't respect, it will not do you anything. I have to respect the anointing, receive the anointing, appreciate the anointing, then it will work for me. Whoever receives a prophet, in the name of a prophet, receive the prophetic reward. You can't go get a reward from a prophet who you have never received. Are you getting that? Amen. So you receive the prophet. You receive the prophetic reward. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. What you sow is what you reap. What you are reaping now, you sowed it. Don't be surprised. And what you are sowing now, you reap it. Whether you sow bad, you reap bad. Don't be deceived. Some people, they spend six days sowing wrong seed, come on a Sunday and believe for a crop failure. I don't, I don't, I don't think you heard me. Some people sow bad things the whole week. They come to on a Sunday. They, they expect God to bless them on a Sunday. What you have sown in the six days, you harvest it on a Sunday. If you don't pray in the week, don't think that God will just come down on a Sunday and manifest to you. The measure you give is the measure you get. If you measure 10 minutes for God, you also measure 10 minutes for you. The measure you give is the measure you get. Are we together? Amen. The Bible says, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Amen. So if you're not drawing near to God, he will not draw. He will wait for you to draw near to him. Then he draws. Amen. Some people are more nearer to God than others. That's why even when that day, when God will meet with Jesus Christ in the air and be with our, with our God in heaven, the Bible says some will shine brighter than others. That some people will not shine in heaven because they never even won any soul. But so, so, so winners in Daniel 12 says they are going to shine. They will shine in the presence of God. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Those are some of the ways of wisdom I want to, I want to, 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 to just share with you. Amen? Amen? If you don't respect your husband, you don't respect Jesus. The head of every man is Jesus. Huh? And the head of the wife is the man. No matter how gifted you are, if your husband is not as powerful as you, you, you are not respected because of a gift. You are respected of who you are. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. 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 No matter how big your title is at work, don't carry it home. 
the moment you leave work, if you are a chief accountant at work, as a wife, when you get home, the husband doesn't want to see a chief accountant. He wants to meet a wife. Amen. I've got so many titles. One of my titles is overseer to you. I'm also a pastor. I'm also a father. I'm also an uncle to somebody. Amen? Amen? Amen. When you look at me. So when you are coming to me, which title are you, in which way are you approaching me? When Joyce at home is coming to me, he's not coming to me as overseer. He's coming to me as husband. Amen. I don't carry that title, overseer in the house, overseer. Ha, ha. She doesn't want overseer, she wants husband. Amen. Some of the mistakes you make, you go with your big titles in the house. You want to be calling each other, Mama Eroda, Mama Eroda, Eroda, Baba Eroda, at home. Amen. Leave those things are for church. Go, when you get home, how many? Huh? It's Joyce. Hi, Joy. How are you? How are you, Joy? How are you? Hi, Ben. Amen. There are times my wife gets angry when I, I want to respect her. Yeah, because in our, in our culture, there are times if you talk to somebody who's big, you say, Va. What, what do you mean? I said, oh, yeah. So I pray. she says, call me Joyce. Some of you, you are, you are behaving like odd people because of the way you are being addressed. Amen. You always be young. I like at times, uh, that's why when at times I send messages to you, you hear me writing, Pastor Ben. Are you... I like it. Pa Pastor Ben Joy. Amen. Pastor Ben. I feel, when you say Pastor Ben, I feel, yeah. But when you say, ba, 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 yeah. <laughs> Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. That was just food, yeah, food for you to go with. Go and use it. Amen. Hallelujah. In life, always show a smile to somebody. Amen. You reap a smile. Uh, many of you are depressed because you don't know how to rejoice. You only get happy when you have got money. When paycheck comes, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That songs are coming now because there's a paycheck in the house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That song, I love it, Mama. That song, you know. <laughs> Never live by paycheck. Have the joy of the Lord. Every time you have the... My father, Babaguti, always says this. He told us, it's one thing I've, I'm, uh, I make sure that we live by. In our house, if you were... I think Justina knows... The way we live at home, because she's, they are closed, they, they know what happens there. Yeah, because uh, they are always closer. They come there, they see. Now, in our home, Baba said, money does not come to people who are sad, who are unhappy. You are there, even if you are selling tomatoes or you are selling whatever. You know what will happen? People look at you and they go with your money. Some of you, that's how a blessing is running away from you. In the church, even God sends Gabriel and says, hey. he goes back with a blessing because of the joy of the Lord is my strength. The heart reflect, the first reflect the heart. A cheerful countenance. <laughs> a cheerful heart. Amen. Makes a cheerful countenance. When you're happy inside, money will follow you. Ah, I say money will follow you. Can I hear somebody say amen? 
I know many of us, we grew up in families where we're always being scolded, scolded, and now you, it's difficult for you to, to, to come out from that. The first is, is, the first is used. Even when you are trying to smile, the face does not smile. Because for a long time, you stayed serious. So much that the muscles, eh? they don't respond. But today, may the joy of the Lord come on. Hallelujah. Any girl, I, I thank God today, blessing today. Come on, stand up. Look at her. She's looking like a sweet 16. Eh? Come here. Come here. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. Walk that walk. Walk that walk. <laughs> walk it. Yeah. Now, because she has been smiling and smiling. <laughs> because she has been smiling and smiling. Marriage has been chasing her. Sooner or later, sooner or later, we were telling her, tell us where you want to go and have your, 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 your honeymoon. And she told us to say that she, she wants to go to Cape Town, South Africa. So we, we say we are going to fly you. We will fly her to Cape Town. It's happening. I say it's happening. You, you are next in line. Your mirror, you, you, you are next in line. I want to talk to somebody here. If it has happened for somebody, just know that it's going to happen to me. I'm next in line. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, I'm next in line. Pastor Joyce, come here. Pastor Joyce, come here. Hallelujah. Say neighbor, say neighbor, say neighbor, say neighbor, say neighbor. Say neighbor. I am the next in line. Somebody say praise the Lord. Now hear me. Spiritually, in the spiritual realm, the line is like this. This one. Eh? Number one. And I'm here. I know. <laughs> when she goes away, I know it's now my turn. I'm the next in line. I want to prophesy to somebody. You are next in line for promotion. You are next in line for enlargement. You are next in line for increase. You are next in line. I say you are next in line. If you know you're next in line, shout a very big hallelujah and celebrate and know that your God is coming for you. Your God is coming with your blessing. There is an angel coming for you. There is an angel coming with your blessing. The year cannot end. The year cannot end without your father giving you a gift. Ah, come on, hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody here. I'm talking to somebody here. If you you know you got a father, a heavenly father, I'm expecting a gift. I came in the church. This morning I came. I know my father has got a gift. Because the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 11, verse 11, it says, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, oh my God, if your son asks for, for bread, are you going to take a stone and give it to him? If your son asks you for, 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 for an egg, are you going to get a scorpion and give him? Oh my God, hallelujah. And the Bible says, hallelujah. How about, how about you, heavenly father, who is perfect? Shall he not give gifts? Shall you not give gift? I saw a scripture. I wrote it down. It says uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes to a man a man whom the Lord has given power to make wealth. Amen? He has given him power to work. Given him power to make wealth and then also has given him power to enjoy it the bible said this is a gift from god uh, somebody here your gift will be wealth <laughs> uh, come on i don't know what gift you are that's what the bible says to one who the lord has given the gift of riches a gift of wealth 
I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. These few minutes, I want us to quickly turn to the book of... Yeah, I've already started preaching. And I'm already halfway. But I want to... Somebody to say, Pastor never quoted the scripture. He never opened the Bible. Hallelujah. Today... I thank God. I didn't sit down with Mandiza as a oh, blessing. But anyway, they spoke prophetically. Amen. I want to say to you, today, today, if you are of this breed that we're talking about, you can't afford to be where you are. But you're going to do something today. Hallelujah. The ego must fly. It's one of the big, powerful messages that I've ministered in many places. But I felt moved to minister that message here today. The ego must fly. If you belong to the ego family, you don't go to marry a chicken. Eagles marry eagles. Okay, quickly, Daniel, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Bless, Lord. Deuteronomy 32 from verse 11. Uh -huh. As an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings and t spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him. You didn't, you didn't read again, again. As an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spread, spreading out its wings, taking them up carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign God with him. Again? As an eagle stares up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign God with him. There was no foreign God with him. There was no foreign God. That means there's some foreign God. Amen? May you never have a foreign God Amen. with you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. From verse 29. Isaiah 40 from verse 29. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run. Tell your neighbor, mount up. Mount up. Say, not mount up. Mount up. With, wings. with wings. As eagles. Say, as eagles. Say, mount up with wings. Tell your neighbor, it's time to mount up. Say, mount up. Say, mount up. I didn't hear you. Say, say Quebec, Toronto, Ontario province. Mount up. Mount up. Hamilton, mount up. Hallelujah. Mount up. Montreal, mount up. Toronto, mount up. Ottawa, mount up. Say, it's time to mount up. As eagles. Hallelujah. Not as chickens. As eagles. Not as birds. But as eagles. It depends how you are mounting up. And ah, come on, hallelujah. If you try to mount up like a hen, you will not go anywhere. I'm talking to somebody here. 
Oh, today we're gonna. Some people will fly. They will fly today. They will fly today. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your word that is anointed. Thank you for your word that, Lord, will not, never return to you. Void without accomplishing the purpose which you have sent it. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. A story is told about a certain man that went in the bush. He was a hunter. He went and uh, he was hunting rabbits. And then he came across a nest. A nest of an eagle. An eagle does not just lay its nest anyhow. An eagle puts a nest at a rock. Amen? Hallelujah. On a rock. That's where eagles make their nest. Birds can make a nest even in your house. In your veranda. Amen? They can make a nest in your tree. Eh? Your mango tree or whatever tree you have at home, you see a nest. But you never see an eagle coming to make a nest in your ceiling. Amen? An eagle always looks for the rock. There is a reason why the eagle looks for the rock. Hallelujah. 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 The eagle goes to the rock, looks for the rock, and on the rock, that's where it makes its nest. The eagle does not make the nest like other birds. Other birds, they'll just take some uh, grass uh, with a, a nest. They'll use it for that particular season of layering. Amen? After the, 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 they've hatched, they have no use for that nest. But an eagle makes a permanent nest. Oh, come on. An eagle makes a what? It makes a permanent nest. Amen. On the rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. An eagle is one of the birds that lives longer than any bird. An eagle does not, when an eagle is picking its mate, amen, it doesn't just pick a mate anyhow. They will go for trials. I said they will go for trials. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? So today I want to see if we have got some eagle pastors here, eagle deacons, eagle elders, eagle Christians. They are going to behave like an eagle. They are going to behave like an eagle. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. The eagle has a different mentality from a duck. Oh, come on, hallelujah. I'll, 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 I'll try it in this time to compress everything to make you understand where I'm going. Hallelujah. When you are a girl, I want you to behave like an eagle. An eagle. An eagle. When. Can I hear somebody? Mm -hmm. Girl, say amen. An eagle. When a male eagle comes. To a female eagle. Amen. Trying to coax it. Amen. He doesn't just agree. Uh -uh. He doesn't just agree. This eagle. Female eagle. Who take this male eagle. For a fright test. Uh, you get what I'm saying. They are going to go on the rock. On the rock. Come on, hallelujah. Eagles never mount up without a storm. They wait for a storm to enter a storm and mount up. It is a storm that takes the eagle up. Ah, can I talk to somebody? Eagles don't fly. Eagles mount up. Can I talk to somebody here? They mount up. Somebody say, praise the Lord. As a Christian, you must know there are times when a storm comes your way. A storm comes in the church. A storm comes. You never stop a storm to come. A storm will come. In Christian life, there is no storm warning. A storm can come anytime. But 
when the storm comes, where do you go to? And you do when the storm comes, you see other beds scampering for shelter, running away from the storm, going into hiding. But the eagle, when it sees a storm, it says it's an opportunity to mount up. It goes to the rock. Psalm 61. Psalm 61. When my soul is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. That is a I don't know if I have a witness here. When my soul is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Who is a rock? Jesus Christ is my rock. Psalms 27. The Bible says, The Lord is my light. The Lord is the strength of my life. The rock of my salvation. Ah, who shall I be afraid of? I shall not fear mortal men. When mortal men, even my enemies, they come to eat up my flesh, I shall not fear. I shall not fear. When they come, yeah, they eat a pass about me. Marika Tabahaya. Oh, because the Lord is my refuge. The Lord is the rock of my salvation. The Lord is my fortress. I shall not fear. It doesn't matter how many enemies you make. For your own information, success. When you are successful, you must know you raise a lot of enemies. There are some people who are working with you now because you are at the same level. I want to prophesy to you. Your level is about to change. Those working with you, they will begin to hate you. Because you will not be like them. You will be at another level. Because you are at another level, they think you are proud. When you are not proud, it's only that your class has changed. You are not proud. Am I talking to somebody here? There are some people who can work with you because you are not yet married. The day they begin to hear that somebody has proposed you, they stop working with you because they know your status is about to change. You're about to become Mrs. Somebody while well, they are still in the same way. Then they begin to complain. Why her? Why her? Haven't you ever seen some people who are worried? It's your marriage. It's your husband. But somebody who is worried, complaining about your husband was not even proposed by your husband. Why did that man marry that one? The moment your levels changes, enemies rise. Success brings enemies. Progress brings enemies. Elevation brings enemies. You should know that. Even in the press, if you are singing just the same, ah, no one will talk. But when you begin to make a coming out, they want to bring you down to their level. You hear some people even commenting, ah, you are off key. When you are not, they just want to manipulate you. Which off key? My God is coming down. With this key, he has come down. With your key, he doesn't come down. Ah. So you want to look for a fort. God came down without a key. 
You with your key. You are even saying, give me J, give me F, give me whatever. <laughs> God didn't come down with a J or C key. Here is somebody just anointed with a special anointing. Hallelujah. Tears start coming down from people. Somebody who is, who is now looking for a fort said, of key, can you can? Enemies. They are there. Enemies. Thank God there is no anointing with, with no enemy. If you are anointed and you have no enemy, that anointing is fake. He anoints my head with oil. I am a hundred of a sire. He anoints my head with oil. He makes my cup to run over. He prepares a table. Marikata. No enemy, no table. No enemy, no table. So God looks how many enemies do you have so that I can prepare a table. A table for you. Somebody, don't pray for your enemy to die. Let them live. Let them see the table. Let them see the Lord. Provide on your table. Because the Lord is your provider. He's Jehovah Shire. He's going to provide for you. Ah! Somebody, get, somebody get here. I know some people don't know Pastor Banda. It's too far away. Get there, my daughter. Somebody on the, on the drum, come on, come on. We're going to preach here. I said we're going to preach here. Are we going to preach here? Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Hey, be, say be careful. Don't become an enemy. Because you see a table. Tell your enemy, tell your, your neighbor again. Say neighbor. neighbor. It may pain you. Because you are about to see a table. The more enemies you have, the more the anointing increase. Don't be a person who just wants everyone to say, Hello, hello, Pastor Lowe's. We love you. Hello, Pastor Lowe's. Mama, I like your dressing. I like your what? Those are deceiving you. There are things you can learn better from an enemy than from a friend. Some of your friends never tell you the truth. But when an enemy says your nose is big, he means that your nose is big. Somebody say praise the Lord. Some of you, the, the reason why you don't take off, you're always surrounded with friends. Surrounded with friends. Enemies will make you to be active. Quick. Sharp. Something. When my enemies, even my foe, come to eat up my flesh, they shall stumble and fall. That's what Psalms 27 says. Let them stumble. Let them stumble. I say, let them stumble. Be careful, don't become my enemy. Because shortly you'll see where I'll be. It will pain you. You remain still talking. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Wait, we are all here, but we're not all. We're not all of us will be here. Some of us are going somewhere. One of the places that is very interesting that I love so much is the bus stop. When you go to a bus stop, there are some people who go to the bus stop not to get on a bus. Some are just escorting others. He said, oh, I'm taking you to the bus stop. Let's go. Amen. Even at the airport. Amen. You see, you can see a lot of cars driving in. Don't think all of them are flying. Some just took one passenger of a flight. They have no flight themselves. 
They have no ticket to fly anywhere. They just drive. May they drive you to your, to your airport. Ah, come on, hallelujah. Let them see you take off. Until they stop seeing you, it's going to happen to somebody here. Some people are going to escort you even with their eyes. They used to see you down, but you don't belong down. He says you are the head and not the tail. You be above and not beneath. Somebody suppose is going to go above. Somebody say praise the Lord. Now hear me. The eagle and the rock they don't separate. Amen. Hallelujah. Now when there's a storm, the eagle looks straight in the storm. And not only that, the eagle, hallelujah, has double lenses. Double lenses. Two eye, two eyelids. There is uh, the eyelid which they use for just normal sight when everything is normal. But when there is a storm coming, the eagle shuts off the other eyelid and puts another eyelid which is able to see even in a storm. What am I talking here? Hear me, somebody. Uh, let me talk to somebody here. It doesn't matter there is a storm. My vision, I can see it. I know where I'm going. I am not perturbed by the things happening. I know my vision. I don't lose vision in a storm. I don't get, become confused in a storm. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. So you see the eagle seated on the rock. And then it looks right in the storm. The storm is coming with debris. It is coming with sticks. It's coming with, with things. Stones. The eagle does not even close its eyes, not even a bit. Because even when a stone comes in the eye, it is still looks. The stone falls out. Ah, come on, hallelujah. A stick goes in the eye. The eagle does not do like this. It keeps on looking, looking at the vision. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 1, seeing that we are surrounded by a cloud of many witnesses, let us run the race that is marked for us. Ah, let's lay aside every weight. Let, let us lay aside every sin and weight which easily entangles us. Let us run our race which has been marked for us. Oh my God, the Bible says, fixing our eyes are on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Why have you shifted your eyes? You are now looking at people. You are looking at my master. So you are looking at Mama Besta Chikwanda. As if you, see, you, are, you came here for Besta. You came here for, my, for Mama. You, you, are, you came here following Jesus. You have taken your eyes off Jesus. That's why you're not going anywhere. Today, line up. I say line up. I say line up. Focus on Jesus. Look at him, Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Somebody say hallelujah. When you look to people, you fell. When you look to the church, you fell. The church is not Jesus. The church can disappoint you. But Jesus will appoint you in your disappointment. Your disappointment becomes an appointment. For your own information, you can never graduate in the things of God. Until you get into adversity. Adversity is your anniversary. To give you, ah, come on. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are about to go to your next level. But before you go to your next level, there is an adversity. That adversity must take you to another level. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The eagle, the feather, just a feather. I can talk about the eagle from the feather, from the eye, the feather, every part of the eagle. Amen. But it can take me the whole three months preaching on the eagle. But just for your own information, the eagle 
when it gets in the storm, it spreads its wings. And it's the storm that begins to lift the eagle. Goes up. It uses the storm to go up. And you're all looking at it until it's high up, loft. The Bible says in Liberation, like an eagle flying loft in the sky. A eagle reaches where other birds don't reach. From today, I prophesy. The limit where your father will reach. Ah, come on, should not be your standard. Should not be your standard. Am I talking to somebody? Should not be your standard. I say should not be your standard. You must go to a loft horizon. Where other birds don't reach. Some birds suffocate when they reach a certain level. Because they say, hey, there is the wind, the air here is uh, diminishing. But eagle can fly, fly until you stop seeing the, it's mounting, just mounting and mounting. It's very high. Amen? Amen? Now, let me talk now to the ladies. When the eagle is proposed, amen, they would go for a flight. It will fly high. The male eagle must fly even higher. He must be competent enough to, to hallelujah. Now, when the eagle, when the eagle, female eagle is in the air, they begin to play. I mean, some people, some marriages, they don't play. Uh -uh, they're too busy for everything. From work to house, sleep, sleep, wake up, go for work, no play. Any marriage where there is no play, may God deliver you. Every time it's a serious issue, you see husband, you say, I want to ask you, that money, yesterday I saw you with the money, where is it going? Every time it's issues, just issues. A house has become a court, a local court. Where you should be answering, uh, answering questions. And the problem with women, women, I'm coming. Today is Big Sunday. <laughs> Let me talk to the women. With the women, the problem with some women, women, they don't know to differentiate between a husband and their children. The way she addresses the children, that's how she wants to address the husband. If your husband leaves the shoes, he says, take your shoes out of me. You will say the same thing also to your daughter or your take your thing I can't wait. If your husband left the bed without spreading it, eh, the way you spoke to your daughter, that's how you speak. How can you leave the bed without sword? Oh, 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 oh. You are the last one to come out and you eh? don't you think? You should think. But if it were your pastor, Pastor Banda has come to your house. I leave your bed with a spreading. Hmm. You are a hypocrite, you. <laughs> ah, come on, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this. Amen. Because pastor slept there. <laughs> if it's your husband, issues. C come here. Come here. What's, what's all this? Okay, I, was, I want to ask you, Mama Eroda, Mama Deacon, why didn't you tell the pastor the same way? <laughs> your husband leaves the car, you are, you are eating. Plates are there. Pastor eats, leaves the plate. <laughs> husband leaves the plate. Hey, come here, come here. Who are you leaving the place? I also work the way you are working. I'm talking to some marriages here. Yeah. 
That's why there's no joy in your marriage. A man who you treat like a boy. You treat like a, a child. Some men are even here. I know you. Some of you, you fear your wife like no one's business. You speak lies because of that woman. Where are you? Uh, 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 I was just, uh, I was just, uh, I was just, I, I, I passed. <laughs> Looking for a lie. Fearing a woman. She's too powerful that you are afraid. Somebody said, mm -hmm. you guys, you are going to marry. That girl, you think she's a, an angel. Wait. You, you, you change that name, angel, angel, honey, honey. She'll never be honey. You'll be telling her, look at you. You are a bee, stinging like this. Yet the first time you're saying, honey, honey. Now there won't be any honey. Storm has come in the house. Somebody say amen. Your husband leaves his tokens. Eh? Because I know men, I'm a man. Amen. I'm a man. My wife, she has got a lot of work with me. But I, I didn't marry her for Joanna. I married her for myself. So if I leave Stocken, I've left it for Joyce to go and put it back where it is. If she shines the house, she's not shining it for Joanna. Even if I'm coming from if we are entering the time of snow and whatever. Whether I come with my snow, I walk in the house. Yeah? She must feel good. Because that's, that's her work. Say, so thank God he's coming. And me, when I walk in and I walk in with my shoes with the, full of snow, I say, and she takes them off, I say, thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, God. She feels good to minister to me. Not you, you, your husband is become a burden. You are even thinking of the days of your mother. Why did you enter that marriage? Some of you are even telling your friends, you are going now, you are driving, you are saying, coming to, coming to, coming to church with your friend. You know my husband, <laughs> ah, I didn't know he was like this. You, 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 you don't marry people you know. Some of the thing you, people you think you know, you don't yet know them. That's why they can surprise you anytime. Oh, I know a, a boy and a girl, they, especially these youths, they cheat each other. They are even telling each other, say, you know when we get married, we'll not be like those. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, think, you, think, you, you think the devil fighting them is different from the devil who come against you. Same devil. Same tactics. Can I hear some of the men? Hallelujah. So now, when the ego, the female ego and the male ego, they go for a fried taste. They'll go, then they'll rock their crows. Huh? So the female will be like this. The male on top. And it's a male with his pinions open. Making balance. Ah, come on. Ah, come on. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. And this, this female ego, it's this it's, it's just makes itself like that. With the whole weight. And this male is holding on and still keeping the balance. And, and, and hallelujah. As they are enjoying themselves like that. Hallelujah. This female ego has a has, has a mission to accomplish on that day. Then she lets go. Amen? The male comes out of the crows of the male. Then it drops. Coming like this. The male will be on top. Amen? Still up there. Watching the, the, the female ego going down. When the female ego is up she doesn't do anything. She comes like a stone. That's coming. So this male must f fly from on top there with the swiftness. That's why you hear the Bible says as swift as an eagle. 
may you have swiftness. Some of you are moving on a tortoise's space. Snail pace. From today, I declare your pace shall increase. You shall be swift like an eagle. Your progress shall be swift like an eagle. If I talk to somebody, say amen. If you're in this house, say amen. I say, I say Canada. Hallelujah. If it took us eight years to be where we are, it will take us one more year to do what eight years. I'm talking to somebody. We are flying now. It's the time to fly. I see the anointing for speed. I see the anointing for acceleration. The Lord says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, He says, Behold. Uh, he says, Jeremiah, what do you see? He says, I see an almond tree. Then the Lord says, You have seen correctly. Behold, I'm watching my word to perform it. I'm, I will hasten to perform my word. Somebody say, say Amen. Ezekiel 12, 24. The Bible said there shall no longer be delay about the things I've spoken. They will quickly be fulfilled. I speak to somebody. If a prophecy is spoken today, tomorrow it will be fulfilled. 24 hours it will be fulfilled. It's going to happen because God is watching. He's watching. He's watching. He's watching. To do. He's watching his word. He's watching his word. He wants to do it. He's watching his word. The word of God shall not return to him for it without accomplishing the purpose to which he has set it. Somebody say, Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, There's a word on my life. God wants to be quick. Am I talking to somebody here? If it took other 55 years waiting for passion, huh? To even buy a house. I prophesy to somebody here. You will not wait for a pension. I say you will not wait for a pension. Uh, I'm talking to somebody. If your father drove a car. When he was 33. You should not wait for 33. Uh, if you are hearing my voice. And you are not yet 33. You are a candidate I'm talking to. Uh, you are, I'm talking to somebody here. If your father drove at 33, eh, you, it will be quick. Amen? 33 divided by 2. 16 and a half driving license. 17, uh, 17 years. Hallelujah. Car. Speed. You are quiet. You don't believe this. Hear me. The eagle will fly. Pick this eagle. Egg, puts it on the back. Fly again to the same horizon. Test number one. Not you. I love you. Yes. Anyone? Yes. Even some people that cannot even carry you. If somebody can fail to buy stocking for himself, can he buy you a bra? No, let me be let me be realistic here. Not when I'm born again. Fired up by God. Precious lady. Immaculate, gorgeous, superb, elegant, classic, exquisitive. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. Somebody say, Amen. I know myself. I know what I'm carrying. I know my God. I'm not looking for a man without God. Who is he to marry me? A man without God, a man with a demon proposing you, and you say yes. Something is wrong. A man with a demon proposing you, and you say yes. I'm carrying Jesus. The, the ones I'm talking, I'm talking to right now. I'm talking to real people. 
eagles, not others. I'm not talking, I'm not talking to, to, to non-eagles. I'm talking to eagles. If you're an eagle, you have got a value. Eagles marry eagles. There is no crossbreeding. You don't crossbreed an eagle. What are you going to breed to, to, to bear? What are you going to produce? If you crossbreed an eagle with a duck, you produce duck eagle. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Another test the eagle does. It says, okay, you're passing number one. Tomorrow you're going for another one. The eagle sits. Amen. And say, see, they have their own language. Eagles coy. <laughs> yeah, they have their love language. The, ma the male must go and catch a big rabbit or a big snake and bring it. That's test number two. She will sit on the nest, on the rock, I mean. Then the male flies away. It will look for the biggest rabbit, even bigger than its weight. Go to catch a rabbit. Bring it for this egg, 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 male, female egg. Then they say, you're past number two. Amen? Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So test number two, this has passed. Then the other thing now they will do is now the male must help in building a nest. Can I hear somebody say amen? Jura, quickly. Jura, you know. You guys. Hallelujah. The male must now know how to help to build the nest. A nest for an ego is hysterical for the family. When they build the nest, amen, it represents history. It represents their togetherness. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. If you marry a man who has got everything, you came with nothing. He will chase you with nothing. It's better to marry a man with nothing. You start together, he has got nothing. Some men are boasting, or a woman, if you marry a woman for a man, you are in trouble. She will tell you, when, you are, when I found you, you were nothing, you. Who are you? Where, where were you? Look at you. You are now eating your nice. Amen. Now, eagles. Amen. Stand here, Baba. Everybody, are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? Eagles don't use grass to make a nest. They will make the, the male must go look for sticks like this. You marry a man who is not even thinking of building a house. He has no vision for a house. You ask him, he says, uh, what's, what's your vision? I uh, know when we get married, honeymoon, we are going to go to Vancouver. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pray number, primary no, uh, thing number one. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to marry me. Do you have money enough to keep both of us? Or are you depending on your father's money? Do you want to marry me on your father's bed? Some even inherit a bed from a father. Your father slept on it and your mother, you were born on that bed. You are also, you are also saying, hey, ha hallelujah. You see this bed we are sleeping on. I was born on this bed. <laughs> you want to rear children on the same bed? Ah, no. Somebody say no! Tell your neighbor, this is real stuff. Amen. When I'm dating somebody, I'll ask him, have you considered to buy a bed? 
What are your plans about a bed? I don't want when I come, we start sleeping on the floor. At my mother's house, I was sleeping on a bed. You want me to take me on the floor? What pride is there? I want to, when my mother visits me, she looks at my bed and says, yeah, My daughter, this bed. Hey, can I hear somebody say amen? My wife, me and my pastor, I had a very big problem with her. She would go to the wardrobe. She would say, can you tell me which is your suit? Here. Here. This one, my sister. This one, the church bought. This one, Elder Soso bought. This one, where is yours? If you're a man like that, you've got no honor. I thank God that the dress she's wearing, this dress she's wearing. Eh? I've got things I can point out. This one I bought. This, but those days, in our early marriages, we were in trouble. Amen? The other time she told the women of Toronto to say, this clothes, it's my husband who bought. This is Shilenje. This is you. Choose which one. They also, they also the women says, ha, ah, mama, go, go with what? Baba's suits. When I buy suit for my wife, I buy the best. So that when she's moving, I'm behind her. I'm saying, is she mine? I feel proud. I make her look good. So that even when I go to her relatives, when they see her, I say, ha, ah, are you the same Joyce? Not when you get somebody's child. When they are returning to their mother, they're even ashamed. I'm talking to somebody here. You man, make that woman better. A woman, even, I've got a problem with her. All her money, even when we're in, in Lusaka, all her money she'll take to church. We are given same allowance, but she comes to me, same day of allowance, says, I, I, I want this. But what's your money? She says, ah, <laughs> your money. Your wife wants to eat your money. I'm talking to you. Your wife wants to eat your money. She's proud. When she eats her husband's money, even if you, you, she, you, are, getting, you are getting 250, she's getting 1,000. The wisdom you husband, I want to teach you. Take your 250, give her eh, a money. Then she puts on her 1,000. You have 1,050. So you just say, Mama, I, uh, can you help me with that? Amen. She will keep on. Keep on. She will keep on giving you. You find by the end of the day, she has given you 900. She has only remained. <laughs> wisdom. Wisdom, sir. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to the men here? You have seen. You have seen. They gave me love offering, eh? Uh, even yesterday. Ask her. I'm not the one having it. She has the... the it's her. I preach here. They give her. She puts her handbag. We don't go home and say, where is the man? I was the one preaching. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. She went to America with Mama Dagarai. She was given love offering 2000 and about 600 3000 dollars US dollars when she preached when she just arrived the same day she came in the house mama dakarai was still there we went in the bedroom she says daddy i'd gone for work you sent me with your prayers here is the money they gave me she counted 3000 dollars gave me the 3000 dollars and she took 100. She says, this, I've got something to do with it. For her to do that, your wife can't do that. You. Because the, your problem is you're not even accountable. You ask, where did the money go? Uh, 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 uh. Again, the other problem you do, you do secret things. You go to Western Union, send for your sister, your wife doesn't know. 
You sent for your aunt, your, your wife doesn't know. Be transparent. Take her together. Go with her. Let's go Western Union. Uh, can I talk to somebody here? I'm reaching you. I'm reaching you. Can I hear somebody say amen? Hallelujah. That's what we do with her. Amen. When the uncle died, we found there, how much is the coffin? They told us. And I said, Mama, tomorrow morning, we're going to send money. I went. Withdrew money. Send it for the coffin. Amen. They received it there. And they were talking at the whole funeral. They were saying, their, their son and their daughter, who is away in Australia, bought this coffin. All what you are eating here. And they were busy exaggerating. They were saying Australia, they made a mistake. Amen. Now, can you imagine when I walk, I walk, I go there to Zambia today. I'm walking. Everyone will say, this one is on a boat coffin. Well, not you. Even when you are coming, they are busy saying, get out. This one is just misusing our daughter. Somebody say, Lord, help me. Amen. So you, you pick these. Amen. Can I hear somebody say amen? Amen. Let's put them around. So they begin to lay the house, the nest. Amen. They are, before they even have children, eaglets, they first of all have massive a nest. I'm talking to somebody. From today, your mentality is going to be an ego mentality. Put the first things first. Amen. So they make this nest this way with these protruding inside, thorns protruding inside. Are we together? Then the next stage, they get leaves. Amen. Let's do it. Put the leaves. Amen. They are making a nest. Amen. Hallelujah. They are working together. May you work together this coming year. Even as you are working talents. If you haven't built a house, I prophesy. Somebody must build a house. Have a house built in your name. Bearing your name. Title deeds in your name. Not just worshipping and you are just a lodger. Thank you Lord. In a, in a house where you are a lodger. There are times they can, you know these landlords, they can come at any time. When you are saying hallelujah father I love you, they say come out. Uh, you have not paid rent, can you come out? You not say please wait for me to say amen. They will say get out with you, amen. Get out. These houses have got no respect. When you are enjoying your sleep, that's when you hear a knock. Come, come, come. Uh, we, 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 your eviction notice was given some five weeks ago. Can you come out? And we hear, no, somebody has moved from Scarborough. He's now in Cabro Square. From Cabro Square. You, you finish the whole Canada. I prophesy in the name of Jesus because you belong to the Eagle family you will have your own shelter you will have your own shelter you may not have it now but you are hearing this word you shall have one I say you shall have it you shall have it yeah those who stood up and said amen thank God it's yours some of you I prophesy some of you you even build flats home where you are coming from. You have people renting. Eh? Renting home. Uh, there. In your name. I say in your name. Because I see money coming your way. I see you changing your status. I see people calling you landlord. They will call you landlord, not tenant. They will say landlord. Landlord. Somebody is about to be a landlord here. You'll be a landlord, not just of a small house. You'll be a landlord of, of, of an estate. Somebody say amen. Can I hear somebody say amen? Hear me. We talked by faith with my wife. 
yeah, the day before yesterday, my brother was calling me from, uh, from uh, Australia. He says, Daddy, what about the, the land, the farm you went to, we went to, to buy? What are you thinking about it? I said, the chief is waiting for us. We, we went, we bought a land. Big land. I mean big firm. On top of a hill. And I said, I'm coming to build a big house here. Eh? A car that is no, have no pulling will not go up. You need a car full pulling to go up there. And I said, uh, Chief, we are, for your own information, we are building a school. A school for all these orphans who are here. We are building a school, putting up a school. And also, we are, going, we are putting up a lodge, a truck lodge. All the trucks coming from Zimbabwe, they'll be turning to Ben Joy. Ah, come on, hallelujah. Ben Joy Lodge. So as I'm going in this time, I'm going. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want to just be a pastor who just says prosperity. Hey, you are crossing over, and I'm just I'm I'm in, I'm in Egypt. I want to be the first one to cross. And somebody say amen. Okay, quickly, let me finish. Now, when they have made this thing like this, then they start the business of rearing a family. Somebody say amen. 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 So when they lay eggs, and the eggs come to hatch, and the eaglets come out, they are born in comfort. Some of us, we think the way we think because of how we were born. When we are born in paradise, your mentality is different from a person who was born in a ghetto. A person born in Bari is different from a person who is born in Chispiti. The people from Mbari, when they come to Canada, they become too proud because it's the first time they are seeing things like this. A person coming from <laughs> Borodale, even when they come here, nothing changes them. They are simply continuing with the life which they were living. A person who never, who, who never drove in, in their family, they never, he was never born in a family of cars. They were just footing. The day they'll buy a car, you'll be in trouble. You'll be in trouble. The neighbors will not drink water. They will not eat. Every day. This car. No one has a car like this one. Hallelujah. So when a person who was never who was not born in a in a comfort place, the people who were born in comfort, even they're thinking, when you say let's go and eat, they don't take you to eh, low places. Look, look at some of you where you go to buy your clothes. There is a big shopping mall here with nice clothes, expensive. You bypassed it. You stay in Brampton. You drive all the way to Dick's Mall. Offers. You are busy in offers, going around offers. You are even scared that you meet somebody who you worship with. How much is that one? How much? Is you are not proud. Can I hear some person? Not that you don't have money. You have a mentality. A mentality, that mentality makes you to behave the way you behave. You were born there. You grew up with that mentality. You are here today. 
Some of you, when I come in your houses, I find those nice, like Mama Dakarai's place. I went there, I saw there were nice plates there. I've been to my Tambuzi's place and to some of your places. I've been to my Masoso's place. You find their nice cups, nice plates. But every day, check the way they are eating. Which plates they are using? You are here, let me reach you. Let me reach you. It's your mentality. You have left the place there. They are just for decoration. You want people to see that you have got nice plates. But when it comes to eating, you are eating from a plastic. Mentality. Somebody say no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say out, 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 out. <laughs> Eagles mentality. Come and hug, high five, Mama. Ah, uh, yes. Somebody say yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Mama Katanda. Are you here? I've been into your house. When there are two of you with Katandawa, which place are you using? When you see Baba Guti or Pastor Banda coming or Bishop Samasuo coming, that's when you go for those plates. You bring them. You are telling us you are not worthy. Your mentality is saying these are not for us. We were not even if we bought them, they were not bought for us. They were bought for some special people. You come on, may you come out from that mentality. May you come out from that mentality. No more from today. You should have an eagle's mentality. Somebody say yes! Some of your children, some of your children, look at this. Ah, today is good. You are going, you are going bless. I'm blessing you. Amen. I don't want when I go to, to Montreal, Mama Robert, she's bringing these nice, nice plates and whatever. I'll ask you, Mama Robert, does Baba Robert eat from here? If he doesn't, I'll tell you, take them back. So that I change your mentality. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Some of you right now, I can even tell you, look at you. Nice teapot you bought. Look at the teapot. So I just saying it. I, I've got you. A prophet is prophesying. You bought it with your own money. You bought it for yourself. Keeping it. And this people is saying, why did then she buy me? What wrong have I done? Am I not useful? Am I not a teapot? And look at the teapot you go to get. The one which is black under. It's darkened by the stove. And you take it. Amen. From today, I want from today you live good, eat good, use good things. I told my children, I don't want to bring you up the way I was brought up. My mother would have all this china away, but she would tell every time I get a glass cup, hey, hey, you break it, you, you don't trust me. That's why some of you are even. Look at some of you. That's why some of you, have, uh, let me, I'll pray a general prayer, but I'll pray for your, for your deliverance. Some of you, even when you buy things, plates, I've seen some people, pastor's house is a, is a, pro, is a place where many people come. And some, they break plates, they don't even replace. They don't even tell my pastor, say, I broke plate. They just walk out. But they broke. Then you discover plates are finished. Some people have a demon of poverty. The moment you are just washing some plates, eh? Sorry, 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 sorry. Somebody has been washing those plates for a long time. No breaking. You, what's wrong with you? What, what made you break the plate? Something has made you to break. You don't, your hands are not used to touch those things. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at how we do when we come even for conference. Baba Katandawa. Baba Katandawa. 
which is the cheapest hotel? Can you tell us? Mentality of a, ch a chicken, not an eagle. Why can't you ask which is the most expensive hotel? I'm coming there, I'm coming for, for deeper life. I'm coming, which is the most expensive hotel? Then we say, okay, we'll look for one. Amen. At, li at least one of these days, enjoy life. Go there. Why are you depriving? You are working like a slave. Who are you working for? The money you are working for. Who are you working for? Ecclesiastes says there's a man who labors and labors. He doesn't even sleep. Gather money and he doesn't know who he shall leave it to. Maybe the person is a bad person who's going to inherit it. Can I tell you one, one more thing? When we go with my wife, what we normally do at times, if I buy a shoe, I would want to put it right away in the shop. I put it and I take the old ones, put them in the what? Plastic. Because I don't know what will happen from now onwards. I may buy a new shoe and I just walking. I'm hit. Somebody who never want, inherit my shoe and he wears is the first one. So the moment I amen, if I buy a new suit, I want to wear it the very time. Because I don't know tomorrow. Some of you are just saying, I'm waiting for the birthday. I'm waiting. <laughs> I bought you this. Put it on now. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Can I hear some, some, somebody say amen? Now, when the eagles have grown, they are in comfort. The Bible tells us as an eagle flaps its wings over the nest. The flapping of the wings makes the leaves, makes the feather that was made lining up these thorns to become a comfort zone. The eagle flaps, flaps, and they fly out so that the eaglets, when they are here, amen, they were comfortable. So now, the thorns start pricking them. So they feel like coming out. But some of you are too comfortable. You, you are supposed to be flying. But we are still in a nest. Crying. Pastor! Pastor! Pastor, where are you? Pastor, still in your nest. It's time for you to fly. It's time for you to come out of a nest. It's time for you to mount up with wings and seagull. You don't mount up with wings in a nest. You are just making the declarations in the nest. Hallelujah. We shall fly. We shall fly. <laughs> Every Sunday we shall fly. We shall fly. Hallelujah. If you, you know, if you can open Isaiah chapter, uh, chapter 40, verse 30, they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagles. We are waiting for you to mount. You have not even mounted. You, have caught, you are coating until you have become a coatable. I want to fly. Toronto, we want to fly. Hamilton, we want to fly. We want to fly. We want to fly. I said, I want to fly. Otter, we want to fly. If people are flying in Zimbabwe, if people are flying in the UK, if churches are flying in America, Yet we have one Father, one God. Canada, I come with a word. It is our time to begin to prepare, to begin to sit on the rock. Let the storm come, take us to another level. Those who came last deeper life, when they come this time for deeper life, they'll be surprised. Because we're going to give them a treatment they have never seen anywhere. The hostess that you're going to be seeing, even you elders, when we have another big Sunday, the next big Sunday you're going to, to have, you see treatment. They will open doors for you. You will say, hey, it's good to be sharing here with you. <laughs> Who give you a chef to drive you? There will be a transport manager. Who will be in charge for transport? Drive. Huh? Elder Roberts and Mama Roberts. 
and you'll be seated behind. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama is good. Eh? Am I talking to somebody? Somebody say yes. Somebody say amen. Next big Sunday, you'll see what will happen. We have already sat down with my wife. That's why we're putting things in place. You see the excellence that will be there. Not some of you are just watching people from outside. Those are the people who are being opened the doors for. Some of you, you think those doors are for just a special people. I wrote a message to the Hamilton Church. You are special. Did you see it? Huh? You, you got that message? I was sending it around 00304. You are special people. I just sent it to Hamilton to say you are special. Special people speak special language. Treat others as special. Special people. Can I hear somebody say amen? But it's a message that I'm going to, I'm coming to Hamilton this weekend. Amen? Hamilton will be together Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Monday. Amen. There will be a guest speaker here who will tell you, Toronto, you have a guest speaker. Uh, Ottawa, you have a guest speaker. Montreal, you have a guest speaker. Amen. Hallelujah. This, this coming Sunday, just go tell the church. We are doing, we have started rotations. We are rotating. So prepare. Amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now because of the thorns, the eagle, the eaglets, jump out of the nest. Amen. Then they come on the rock. The nest is made right closer to the edge of the rock. So that when some of the eagles, the eaglets, jump out, they fall through the rock. And in that process, they begin to flap their wings. Flap their wings, trying to, fly, trying to fly. That's why some of the things, it's God pushing you. You know what the mother eagle does at the time? When the eaglet is at the edge, he begins to push. And then the eaglet goes to the edge. Oh, mama, what are you doing? <laughs> the mother keeps on pushing. Until this eaglet starts to fall from the cliff. Then the mother will sit on the cliff watching it. Because the nest is built on a high rock. So the eagle says, Mama, you're not fair. Ah, you know I can't fly. But where did you drop me? Amen. So when the, when the small eagle, eaglet is, up, is going down to hit the ground, the mother comes to pick it. Brings it on the rock. Lesson number one for flight. Some of the things you are going through, God has been teaching you to fly. But you are too stubborn. You are binding the flight session. Father, I bind you. This is not the way. Satan, get out. You, you are only on a test. God wants you to begin to fly. How many times have you bound those things that are not going? Every time spiritual warfare, I bind this. I buy, I'll not fall. I'll not. <laughs> it's a mother ego. Come here, sir. The grief here. Mother does it deliberately. <laughs> Some of the things is God pushing you. <laughs> so that you may learn how to fly like God. At the, at the throne of God, there are four creatures. One, there is a face of a lion. Two, there is a face of a man. Three, there is a face of an oxen. Four, there is a face of an eagle. Why did God pick these creatures to depict his throne? Because I've got special qualities. He didn't pick a duck. He didn't pick a come on, I'm talking. He didn't pick a hen. No matter how 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 how, how much a hen is eaten. Amen. God did not choose it. Because a hen, even if it's eating. A lizard falls in the house. You hear him. Then it realizes ah, it's a lizard. Lizard, I eat lizard. It runs after lizard. Lizard climbs and goes up. That's how some of you are. Small thing, you run away. You realize, hey, uh, uh, oh, so there was a blessing there. You are coming, uh, it's gone. From today. I'm sending you 
as an ego. I'm sending you. You belong to the ego. God is wrong. There is an ego there. I'll continue. You are, until I see you fly. One message for you now. It's time to fly. Like Mandisa was prophesying. It's time to pro I spoke about it yesterday that we are going to run. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Everybody stand up. Stand up. Thank you, sir. I will continue with this stuff. We will continue. We will use it. But we will take a better one. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. I want you to look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. You are special. From today, I want to tell the whole province, treat anyone who walks in this church as a special person. Because God treats them special. I want to say to you, right now as I'll be praying for you, from today, change your mentality. As a man thinketh, so is he. Some of the things that your people, your friends are talking about, you think they are proud. They are not proud. They know who they are. You, you take it as a pride because you have got the mentality huh, of the nest where you are born, where you are brought up. If you were born in a house where your father and your mother were scolding, fighting each other, you still carry the same spirit. You come in church and you still be a fighter. It's how you were brought up. If you grew up in a nest where there was hostility, you bring hostility in church. If you are no non-cohabitant, like Jezebel, which means non-cohabitant. Jezebel means non-cohabitant. Amen? She didn't cohabit with people. She didn't want to mix with people. Only the people, that, the people she wanted are people who flattered her. Those are the ones she took to be prophets. She hated Elijah because Elijah would tell her the truth. So she was used. Some of us, we want people that pamper us who tell us, even when you are going in a ditch, they are telling you you are okay. No, you know what? They should, also, they should also consider my feelings. You are going in the ditch to consider your feelings. Which feelings are you talking about? Any step from now, you'll be going and you'll be drowned. You're talking about the feelings. Instead of being controlled by, by having been controlled by the spirit, you're controlled by feelings. And ego is not controlled by feelings. Can I hear somebody say amen? Somebody say amen. From today, I don't want to see a big elder in a nest. Big digon, big, big, big pastor in a nest. We want to see you fly. Can I hear somebody say amen? You want to mount up. You never mount up if you don't know how to wait on God. You don't just mount up accidentally. You must do the waiting. You must know the art of waiting. People can carry you, but they'll carry you to a certain extent. Some of you, you have become so much a burden. Every time some people have to come, no, be strong. Be strong. Let's keep on. For how long? For how long? Ten years in the church, you still want somebody to hey, keep on, mama, keep on. You know these things happen. And you are crying in your nest. This forward in faith. If it wasn't for Babagut, I could have gone. <laughs> Fix 
fixing your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Watch us see the next level we are going to. We are here now. Tomorrow will not be here. Where we are going is a higher dimension than here. Don't think we are dying here. This place is not permanent. Here I'm doing my rehearsals. My rehearsals for where I'm going. Somebody say praise the Lord. From today, if you're a girl, go on the mirror. Do some wedding rehearsals there. Don't do the dog walk. Uh -uh. Do the cat walk. Some of you, even you walk, uh, you walk like you're a man. <laughs> Yet you are a girl. You are a lady. No step. Even if you wear a nice shoe, still the step is as if you are wading in the water. God help somebody here. Hallelujah. Me, I like pushing my wife in front. Push her. And when she's walking, she starts. Your husband, where he works, there are some girls who have been, they went to school just for walking. She comes in, she comes in the fire. Not you when you are coming with the food. In your house, train yourself to be the hostess. The hostess. In the house. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Let your husband sit and come and host, walking like a hostess. Can I hear somebody say amen? Yeah. Mama. Mama. Oh, yeah. Oh, you put it. Put it, Duke, Mama. Yeah. Put it on your Mama. The, some of you, right now, you're looking good. But when we come to your house. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mama, come. Come. <laughs> like this. today excellence in your house excellence wherever you go excellence in the church eagles excel eagles are born for excellence eagles excel they are born for excellence somebody say yes say i am an eagle say i am an eagle excellence is my motto excellence is my motto in the name of jesus the Bible tells us Daniel in chapter 6, uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 1, verse 3. Now, Daniel distinguished himself from other startups because the spirit of excellence was in him. I prophesy the spirit of excellence is coming upon you. I say it's coming upon you. At your workplace you shall excel because you belong to the eagle family. I say you shall excel. You shall excel. Not by chance, you shall excel as excel, you shall excel as excel at school. You shall excel at school. Somebody say amen. Because you belong to the eagle family. Hear me, you sit on the exam, you be seated. Your mentality is connected to God. The Holy Ghost is empowering it, energizing it, giving you wisdom. I see people excelling at school. I see people excelling at school. I see you getting ah yeah yeah ah yeah yeah yeah. No, come on, come on, come on. Somebody say amen. Tell your neighbor because I belong to the eagle family. I will excel. Excellence is my motto. Say in the name of Jesus, we are going to excel. Toronto, hear me. Toronto, Hamilton, Ottawa, hear me. I am talking to you as an overseer. Your overseer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Montreal. Hear me.
we are tired of people coming from a small assembly which they failed to pastor. They come to tell you ideas which didn't work for them. And they say, Amen. And you go to be laid hands. Some of you, you are too simple, you believe anything. A man who failed to grow cabbages cannot tell me how to grow cabbages. A man who has never run a province cannot tell me how to run a province. He has never been tested at any province. He can't talk about matters of a province. You can talk of theory, but there are people who have experience. I want people here who can be bold and proud. Talk what you know, we also know. The God of Ezekiel is also our God. We can tell you what we are doing here. We can tell you about the manner we raise. We can tell you about the testimonies we have. You, you are, people are telling you their testimonies. Some of the testimonies are outdated. You got a valid testimony now. You are hearing from an outdated testimony. Some people are ex-anointed. Some people are anointed. Amen. They used to be anointed. They are no longer anointed. Amen. I want to hear people, Toronto, when you stand, talk big. Don't go to the media. Go to the, don't you, you go to internet, belittle yourself. And you expect God to lift you up. God will never, God will never use a discouraged somebody. God will never use a person who despises himself. He will never bless somebody who looks down on himself. You look down on your church, you will never be raised. Can I hear somebody say, man, talk good about your, your church. Say, so, uh, just wait, you see what will, will happen to us. Amen. I'm not talking to somebody. Job chapter 8 says, though your beginning is humble, your end will be greater. It's not the beginning that matters. It's the end. We are simply starting. Some of us, uh, hear me, Canada, you have been on your max. On your what? Eh? Others started running, uh, running 60 years ago. You, you, they have run. So you were on your max. Get set. Amen. Now you are starting go. The first shall be the last. The last shall be first. Somebody say praise the Lord. What is coming away? People who change the testimony. They heard bad things about you. They will hear good things about you. They will hear good things about Canada. Can I hear somebody say amen? I see in here some people, some of you 10 years from now, 10 years from now, hallelujah. Yeah, you are, you are only, you are, you are, you are, some of you are 20, 26. You'll be 36 when, I'm, when this will be happening. Huh? You are 26, but it, it will be hard. 36, but the time you'll be 36, the people you are with today, 26 years, they will fear you. Amen. I prophesy. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Say I belong to the ego. Zayonja forward in faith. If you stay three months without buying a new jacket, Something is wrong with you. There is a God in this church who lift up the poor. There is a God in this church who lift up the people from non-entity to become an entity. Somebody say yes! From a zero to a hero. From disgrace to grace. That's where you are going. From disgrace to grace. Somebody say, man, I see a potential on your life and an anointing on your life of a landlord. A landlord. A landlord. In three years' time, in three years' time, you didn't have a house, you'll have houses. I say you'll have houses. I say you'll have houses. There will be money that will be following you from somewhere, from another country. 
because you've got a property there. I'm talking about you. You said amen is your portion. You said amen is your portion. You said amen is your portion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. I see somebody, God is giving you wisdom to go into transport. Business. You'll prosper. Transport. Transport. I hear you are here. You are here. Is it you, sir? Is it you? Hallelujah. Transport. 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 You will have people who will be working for you with fleet of buses. And I see some trucks. Not only buses, trucks. Like what?